Good afternoon. Uh, this is the first of what we are calling Friday Thoughts, Living Faithfully Together. I am amazed. Last week was filled with profound change. It was just a week ago yesterday that I was supposed to travel to Guatemala uh, to strengthen our connection with a partner congregation there known as Jesus El Buen Pastor. But a week and a half ago on Sunday, that was postponed. So I made plans with Kathy to travel to see our youngest granddaughter, Addie, and our son, Dan, and his wife, Jane, in San Francisco. We were going to also do that last Thursday. Canceled. And then we came to last Sunday worship here at Trinity. Suspended. I don't know that we've ever seen anything quite like this before, and yet we are called as God's people to live faithfully in the midst of difficult times. And that's why I come to you today. I was thinking back to the year 2002. I had a sabbatical time away. It came right after 9-11, uh, for those who remember that. And I decided to take a month away on the north shore of Lake Huron. And during that month away, I chose to spend time studying the book of Isaiah, uh, the 40th chapter, one chapter for the whole month. What struck me about it was uh, that, that Isaiah 40 begins simply with this. Um, you maybe know it better as, Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Um, speak tenderly to Jerusalem. Uh, make straight the path that leads to our God. But there's also a part in there that is more surprising, and it goes something like this. A voice says, cry. That's how Isaiah 40 begins. And the prophet says, well, what should I cry? <laughs> That's the prophet's response. And the, the rest of the chapter is about how that voice from God gives him various messages for the people of God. So it was a profound month. Time away, I guess you'd call it. And, um, and I look back on it with great joy and thankfulness for every moment I had. So I'm hoping that during this time where we are absent from one another uh, because of the coronavirus or COVID-19, that this will be an opportunity for us um, or for you, for each of us as a community to connect with God uh, in the quietness of our own homes. And so we'll be coming to you each week uh, with words of encouragement, uh, prayer concerns, and all the various things that we need for our life together. So as I think about that today, uh, some concerns, prayer concerns that we have. Um, Carol Lundholm, who is uh, home alone, uh, first time in a long, long while since uh, Mark died. We keep her in our prayers. Jean Swanker has been moved to a, a nursing care in Wisconsin. Uh, Roger Tower and Linda Popa, um, uh, through an unexpected um, incident, uh, encountered someone who had uh, the COVID-19 virus, so they are now on self-quarantine. Uh, the Overgaard family, uh, Annika just returning from, from Spain, uh, and now together with her dad, with Peter, uh, they're in self-quarantine um, to see how this unfolds. Uh, Pastor Carrie and her family with a grandson, nine-year-old grandson, uh, showing some symptoms of something going on that uh, we don't know yet, and so concerned for that. We want to pray today for our teachers, our school staff, not only as they prepare distant learning opportunities, but as they deal with what's life like for them as teachers and how do they deal with their own angst and emotion not being connected to their children and kids for a while. Uh, we want to lift up our officers and firemen and those in the community that are essential people and personnel to keep us safe, and they put themselves at risk. And I think of all of our healthcare workers, um, our doctors and nurses, and those who put themselves on the line as they deal with all that is unfolding. Uh, we pray for them. And then we think of those who are laid off or out of work, those who are struggling financially, um, everyone making decisions that impact their lives. Kathy and I have been in contact with our kids um, pretty regularly this last week. Our son and uh, daughter-in-law and little Addie in San Francisco are, are on lockdown. Um, they weren't even getting mail until just yesterday. Our daughter, Laura, and her husband, Matt, and our other two granddaughters in Seattle or Shoreline uh, just 
17 miles from the nursing home where so many deaths have already occurred. Um, they're struggling to put their world back together and not sure how that's going to uh, come together. So um, our hearts go out to all of you and uh, we share a deep concern for um, for your safety and well-being and that's part of why we've closed the doors to the church for now to keep the most vulnerable among us as safe as possible. So I hope this time for you can be a time to hunker down um, but also a time to enrich your life with God um, and yet stay connected through a prayer uh, through a prayer chain if needed, through our uh, calling uh, phone tree that will be happening and we're setting up just now. Um, and we hope you'll stay connected with us at the office with whatever needs you may have. Um, and in the meantime, keep all of these people in your thoughts and in your prayers. So I'd like to close this time together simply with one of my favorite prayers that comes from the uh, ELW uh, morning prayer service. And it's like this. O oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending by paths as yet untrodden through both perils and opportunities unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you.